How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. This is episode number eight of Back to the Mac. And on this week's episode, we are again talking about external graphics boxes because who doesn't love eGPUs? This week, we're talking specifically about this guy right here. This is the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box 650W. Now, this is sort of like the flagship external graphics box for a number of reasons. Number one, it has an Apple recommendation. Number two is that it has a fairly hefty power supply in here. It has a 650 watt SFX power supply in here, and it's a modular power supply. You can even swap it out if it goes bad or whatever the case may be. It probably isn't gonna go bad, but it's just nice that this thing is modular, so you could swap it out if necessary. The third really cool thing about this external graphics box is that it's able to supply up to 87 watts of power to your MacBook Pro. And that means while connected to a 15 inch MacBook Pro, it can charge it at full speed. Now, the next thing I like about the Breakaway Box 650 is that it is large enough to accommodate larger cards. Although it doesn't seem like overly large, it is big enough to accommodate something like this right here, which is just ridiculously ugly and big. This is the Asus Republic of Gamers RX 580 and it's just, a very, very large card. Even compared to the Vega 64, I mean, it dwarfs the Vega 64, but yes, this can, with a little bit of shimmying and a little bit of contorting, it can actually fit in this box um, with a little bit of room to spare, not much. I also like the fact that this box is really, really quiet. Well, outside of the GPU, that is. The GPU is gonna make a lot of noise regardless, especially if you're really pushing it, uh, but this little fan inside isn't actually that bad. I've ran into some very, very terrible external graphics of uh, fans in the past. This one is not one of those. It's actually fairly quiet and does a pretty good job of keeping things nice and cool. Now, I'm not a really big fan of the case itself. It is, I mean, it's just like your normal PC case, like an aftermarket PC case that has been fabbed specifically for external graphics. Um, so it's gonna have some sharp edges inside. Uh, it's just not gonna look very pretty. It's that same black metal that you find on your average run-of-the-mill PC case, but it works. But the most important thing is what we mentioned at first, and that is the Apple recommendation. Apple actually lists this thing on its website, um, and yeah, I mean, you can't really go wrong there. And because this thing has that beefy power supply, it can power any Mac-compatible GPU, even the top-tier AMD Radeon Vega 64. You can actually get a bundle right now, which is I mean, it sounds crazy because it's $1,300, but it's actually a pretty good deal because as you guys know, GPU prices are just ridiculous. And of course, people have debated as to why that is. Obviously, the cryptocurrency uh, madness that's going on right now contributes heavily to that. Um, but as far as who is to blame for the rise in prices, obviously, the GPU manufacturers have something to do with it. And then uh, the fact that there's just not enough supply, they weren't really anticipating this huge demand on GPUs. Uh, that's part of the reason as to why the prices have skyrocketed like they have. I got this Radeon RX Vega 64 for I think like $650 when it first came out, maybe $700. Can't really remember off the top of my head. But now this thing is going for over a grand easily. Um, so that really kind of shows you how crazy of the GPU market is right now. Now, like I mentioned, they are offering both the enclosure and the RX Vega 64 for $1,300, which actually, when you do the math, as crazy as that sounds, it's actually a pretty good deal. Considering the prices of these GPUs right now, $1,300, you subtract 450, you're, you're looking at about 850 bucks for the Vega 64, which is obviously high, but a lot cheaper than you'll find it standalone. So. It's actually a pretty good deal, as crazy as that sounds. Okay, let's get down to business. We're going to unbox, we're going to set up the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box 650W right now. So let's do it. Okay, so inside the box you have some instructions, a power cable, a Thunderbolt 3 cable, which is important. And that's all the accessories, so we'll just pull it out of the box like this.
unwrap it. And here we go. So you have a little window here. On the other side, you have your fan, your case fan. There's the front panel and the little Sonnet logo will light up with a blue color once the unit is powered on. On the bottom, you have four rubber feet. And then on the rear, you have the power supply. You also have your Thunderbolt 3 connection, which goes to that Thunderbolt 3 controller from Intel. And you have your PCIe slots. You also notice several handy thumb screws, so you don't need a screwdriver to remove the cover from the case, which is nice. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. Oops, <laughs> a little carried away there. All right, so let's remove the cover. Again, this just reminds me of one of those custom PC cases, those relatively inexpensive PC cases. Not the nicest thing to remove there. Got some sharp edges here and there as well, so keep that in mind. So you will need a screwdriver to access the PCIe slots. And there is the Intel Thunderbolt 3 controller. As you can see, it's a relatively simple deal. You have your Thunderbolt 3 controller, your power supply, your fan, and the chassis itself. And here's the RX Vega 64. It does require a dual six plus two pin connection. Here's the rear of the unit. So we just slide that right in and connect it. Just like that. All right, once it's locked down in the place, we can just screw those screws back in to secure it in, just like that. We'll add this little plate back on. Use the thumb screw to secure it, just like that. And now, you know what time it is, time to connect the power. So we got the two six plus two pin power connections. There we go, so now we'll put the cover back on. Always a fun thing to do. All right, so now we'll re-secure the cover using the three thumb screws. Sped up, obviously. So there we go, folks. The Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box 650W ready to go. I have my Hisense television, the 4K TV up there. And there's my MacBook Pro, and there is the eGPU, all set up, ready to go, and powered on. All right, so let's talk about some of the really nice characteristics of the Sonnet eGraphics 650W. Obviously, the big thing here is the power delivery, 87 watts of power delivery. I'm going to show you that in a second. You can see the Thunderbolt statistics under the About This Mac and System Profiler. But let's, let's go ahead and check out power now. So you see power there, we'll scroll down and you see right there, 87 watts of potential power that we can deliver. If you have a 15 inch MacBook Pro, it's gonna be able to charge that 15 inch MacBook Pro at full speed, which is really, really nice. Okay, so now let's talk about what really matters, performance. We're gonna run some benchmarks now, folks. First thing we're gonna do is run a Bruce X benchmark for Final Cut Pro 10 just to see if the eGPU helps out at all because a lot of people use Final Cut Pro 10, they're interested in eGPUs. Well, I got some disappointing news for you folks. <laughs> You're gonna see right here why this is so disappointing. So we're running Bruce X right now. This is a very popular benchmark, a little utility, and you can see nothing. On the AMD RX Vega 64, you see the Intel Iris, the integrated graphics handling all the heavy lifting. The eGPU is doing nothing. Yeah, Final Cut Pro 10 is not yet optimized to use external graphics just yet. Hopefully that will come soon. I thought it was gonna be with 10.4.1, but no. But you can see here that the Heaven benchmark is definitely utilizing that eGPU. It's pegging out there, you can see heavily using the eGPU, so it works, but it doesn't work yet for Final Cut Pro 10. Big disappointment there. We're gonna run some other benchmarks though. Let's start with the metal. So you can see the integrated graphics, you see the RX 580, and then you see that Vega 64, how it handles the three off-screen tests, Manhattan 3.1, Manhattan, and T-Rex, you see. No question about it. 
of those two external GPUs, the RX 580, obviously huge jump over the integrated, but the Vega 64 also a pretty significant jump over the 582. We're gonna run some uh, OpenGL tests now here with the Heaven Benchmark Valley and of course Cinebench R15. So you see that integrated 11.3 frames per second for Heaven. You see it obviously does a lot better when you start stepping into the external graphics. Obviously that Vega 64 is going to be really, really good, but the RX 580 is no slouch either. But yeah, no question, the Vega 64 is going to be the best performing external GPU for the Mac at least right now. So now we're doing an OpenCL test. This is very interesting because of course, Final Cut Pro uses OpenCL GPU acceleration. So you can see the potential there that Luxmark text is really showing how much of a difference that Vega 64 makes. Huge difference between the integrated graphics. So that really makes me hope that Final Cut Pro 10 will be updated to support external graphics and really benefit from the power of an external GPU. So what can we discern from all these benchmarks we just ran and all the tests and everything we talked about in this video? Well, the main thing that I get from this is that external graphics have a lot of potential, a lot of untapped potential, because really it's the software that's lacking right now. The big thing that sticks out to me, the lack of external graphics support in Final Cut Pro 10, which is kind of a disappointment considering that, we know, we just got this new version of Mac OS with eGPU support. And then Final Cut Pro 10 just recently had a huge release with 10.4.1, yet external graphics support is not baked in. You would think that that would have been something to, you know, to have with this big Final Cut Pro 10 release to coincide with the official support of external graphics on Mac OS, but that didn't happen. So hopefully in the future, in the near future, we will see Final Cut Pro 10 be able to take advantage of these external graphics setups. Hopefully not just one eGPU, hopefully it can take advantage of multiple external graphics setups at the same time. I think we can also conclude that, you know, gaming performance is going to be benefited in a major way as well. Now, obviously it's not as good as if you had, you know, a modular Mac Pro and you had a PCIe slot dedicated to graphics built right into that machine. You're still using Thunderbolt 3, so there is going to be uh, some bandwidth constraints in that regard. It's not going to be the same as, you know, building your own PC and having uh, a 1080 Ti in that PC. You're just not going to get the same type of performance. But an eGPU still crushes that dinky integrated graphics that you find on my 13-inch MacBook Pro. There's just no question about it. And games are going to benefit heavily from that. I think what we can conclude is that eGPUs are very promising, but it's still in its infancy. Uh, Apple has made some significant strides over the last year in its support of eGPUs. I mean, it is official support baked into Mac OS. But we still don't have things like NVIDIA support. So that's sort of a bummer, especially for gamers. Uh, Apple doesn't support bootcamp for eGPU setups. That's sort of a bummer because some of the games we like to play may be Windows only or they perform better on Windows. And really, let's face it, the elephant in the room, eGPU setups are ridiculously expensive. Certainly more expensive than the benefit I think that you get out of it for most people, especially since apps like Final Cut Pro 10 don't take advantage of external graphics just yet. So yes, the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box is probably the best external graphics box you can buy right now. However, I would probably wait it out a little bit, first of all, to see how Apple supports external graphics with apps like Final Cut Pro 10, how other developers support it. And also, let's just be honest, I, I would probably wait until eGPU prices or just GPU prices in general come back down to reality. Right now, it's just crazy money that they're asking. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been a look at the Sonnet eGraphics Breakaway Box 650W. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. And also, if you appreciate this video, please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.